The race is on for solid state batteries, which is supposed to be the holy grail of battery technology to transform not only the auto industry, but also the prices of automobiles way, way down. Today, we're gonna get into who are the leaders on the patent race for solid state batteries. Also get into which automakers are working with which companies to produce these state-of-the-art batteries. We're also gonna talk about material costs for batteries at the end of this. Grab your snacks and drinks and let's get into it. We're at Nikkei Asia. Toyota secures huge lead in solid state battery patents. Japanese companies dominate the top 10, but South Korean rivals gaining ground which is good for this channel because I mainly just cover Japanese and Korean cars. Manufacturers are claiming solid state batteries will have double the driving distance, a third of the charging time, and are way safer. They don't explode like traditional liquid lithium ion based batteries. But estimates right now are saying that solid state batteries cost four times more than a traditional lithium ion battery. So Toyota is the leader with solid state battery patents with over 1300, while Panasonic is a distant second with 445. Idemitsu Kosan holds 272 patents, meaning the Japanese companies hold the top three spots. So that's a great start for Toyota anyways. And luckily for Toyota, Panasonic is their number one partner. It's also Tesla's number one partner, but Toyota and Panasonic have been working together for a long time. They have two companies, joint ventures together. They probably have the jump start when it comes to solid state batteries, but just because you have more patents doesn't mean you're actually closer, right? You could have more ships searching for the lost city of gold, but all you need is one, one patent in theory to break through, right? So their, their chances are greater here is seemingly versus a competition. They've been investing in solid state batteries for a very, very long time. Apparently since the 1990s, they've been patenting solid state batteries in a wide range of applications, including battery structure, material, manufacturing processes. We know in 2020, which was supposed to be when the Tokyo Summer Games were, uh, Olympic Games, that Toyota was going to have like a torch bearing prototype car uh, and with solid state batteries, but that was delayed till 2021. And then their whole investment for the Tokyo games was controversial. And yes, it was a big waste of money for them essentially, but it looks like we probably won't have a solid state battery in a Toyota until 2025, 2026. And that's going to be in hybrids first. So it won't be in a battery electric vehicle. Ide Mitsu Kosan holding the 272 patents behind Toyota Panasonic. They have big oil refineries and they hold patents mainly in metallic materials for solid state batteries. But what's really interesting is the growth of the patents. From 2016 to 2020, Toyota increased its patents in its possession by roughly 40%. During that same span, Samsung more than doubled its patents and LG Chem tripled its count. We know LG Chem and General Motors are working together for the Ultium platform, therefore Honda is as well as they have a memorandum of understanding. And General Motors will be building Honda's EVs for the first couple waves. The prologue will be there. Also, Acura will be building their EV off of the Cadillac Lyric, which is going to be uh, in market this year, of course. And produ production has started already this past month or two. So South Korea seems to possess more patents when it comes to different things. So their patents concern real, real world performance as well as a lifespan of batteries. And the K-Asia reminds us that Japan has been a behemoth when it comes to battery technology. Sony came up with the first rechargeable lithium ion batteries in 91. In 2018, Panasonic held the largest global share in that category. But the Chinese battery manufacturers have flipped this script. Last year, Panasonic slid into third place in market share. Of course, the government supports the battery companies massively there. Also in Japan, things are changing. The government is starting to send tons of money towards the Japanese companies because they don't want to get too far behind China at this point. So we're going to switch gears over to the next web. They've come up with a list of all the manufacturers working with all the different solid state battery companies. And most of these solid state battery companies are startups. There's nothing wrong with that. Look, Tesla started as a startup. Actually, every company starts as a startup. But anyways, let's get into the solid state battery list here because this is a lot of fun for me. I'll probably like bookmark this page because it's hard to 
just get all these companies straight and who's working with who. So let's start with Volkswagen, which I feature a little bit on the channel from time to time. They've teamed up with QuantumScape and they plan on solid state battery cells in 2024. We know Toyota's working with Panasonic and we'll have hybrids with those solid state batteries in 2025. And the reason is because hybrid smaller battery packs will reduce the cost of expensive solid state batteries in full battery electric vehicles. Uh, on top of this, they provide a better test bed for the new tech, given that they need to, re to charge and recharge more often. BMW and Ford are working with solid power, and it looks like they already have a pilot production line this year for solid power. BMW is estimating commercial solid state batteries by the end of the decade, and it promises a demonstrator vehicle well before 2025. Ford doesn't have any timelines yet for their solid state batteries with solid power. Stellantis. Chrysler Dodge here stateside, as well as a bunch of other, you know, Maserati, et cetera, they keep going. Anyways, the group has invested in factorial energy and aims to have its first competitive solid state battery introduced by 2026. Nissan is planning to launch EV batteries in 2028. A pilot production line is expected in 2024 for them. Honda, like I mentioned, working with General Motors and Ultium, but they will eventually have their own EVs based off their own platform. And they'll also be working with Sony, Funny, we mentioned Sony early, earlier in this video. In 91, they came out with the rechargeable lithium ion battery. Anyway, Honda saying mid decade, it plans to develop its own demonstration line, hoping to make it operational by the spring of 2024. Mercedes Benz is teaming up with Prologium, and they're hoping to have solid state batteries in the second half of the decade for their vehicles. General Motors is currently building its Wallace Battery Cell Innovation Center in Michigan, which will focus on the development of its Ultium lithium ion batteries and accelerate new battery tech, of course, including solid state. So I'm done talking about solid state batteries. If you guys had to bet which companies are going to come out with successful solid state batteries first, probably going to start in 2025. They're not going to be cheap. Nissan thinks they can reduce the prices of their current batteries when solid states are out by 50 to 60%, but that might not be for another decade or more. So long-term solid state battery is better in every single way. It's cheaper. Eventually it'll be cheaper because it requires less materials. But if you guys had to bet, which company or companies do you think are coming out with solid state batteries first? I mean, Toyota has the patent lead, but they're still not there and they're gonna have it in hybrids first, which is not a bad thing because that might be able to reduce their global CO2 fleet average more drastically than the current lithium ion setup. So, and improve their fuel economy. Let's get into lithium ion stay sky high as other EV battery metals come down to earth. Today we're talking largely about lithium, nickel, and cobalt, which are the materials needed for the most potent battery packs in today's EV technology. But they're starting to fall out of favor in the Chinese market, which we'll talk about as well in this video. And these components make up about 40% of the cost of the battery cell. The price for lithium carbonate stood at $70,000 per ton on Monday, which is 6% down from mid-March. It's still up 70% from the end of 2021. Holy heck. And that is a large reason why all the manufacturers' battery cars are so expensive and their prices in some cases keep going up. If you look at Tesla, their prices went down for a while, but now they're going back up because battery costs are going through the roof. Now, the price of nickel is up 8% on the year, but is down 53% luckily from the most re recent peak on March 7th. Cobalt is down 5% from the end of last year at about $32 per pound. So the drops in nickel and cobalt are because of battery technology especially China, which is the biggest battery electric vehicle market in the world right now, they are switching to lithium iron phosphate, which doesn't need nickel. It doesn't need cobalt. You see the prices of cobalt plummeting. You can see the prices of nickel while well, they spiked here, but they're definitely going down while lithium is remaining constant. Iron phosphate is way cheaper than nickel and cobalt and has drawn Chinese automakers toward LFP battery cells instead of the NMC batteries. LFP batteries cost 20%. Then the NMC batteries are considered to be safer. They don't blow up, but we don't have to wait for solid state batteries for safer batteries. But if you want the best of both worlds, which is it's extremely long range and high energy density as well as safe. That's all state batteries. But right here, right now, we can reduce the range a little bit, switch the chemistries and a much safer lithium ion phosphate battery. And these new batteries are taking up 60% of the electric vehicles in China right now. Tesla's shifting to LFP cells for its mainstay Model 3. There are also rumors that the all-wheel drive 
BZ4X with the CATL battery, that that could be a lithium ion phosphate battery. But the charging rate on that all wheel drive model is so terrible that it almost leads itself to being a different chemistry altogether. So anyways, that's just a theory. Goldman Sachs projects LFP batteries to make up nearly 40% of the global uh, EV market by 2030. It's less than 30% right now. We're gonna end this video with some huge nuggets here. Sourcing lithium has become a major priority in EV competition, of course. So this is in Australia, China, and Argentina, which produce over 90% of the world's lithium. So Chinese battery makers have huge stakes in lithium mines, but only a handful of Japanese companies do, including Toyota Susho and Hanwha. Toyota Susho is, of course, dead a fully owned subsidiary and company under Toyota. And Japan relies much heavier on imports than China does, which increases the prices of batteries. And the weakening yen have made sourcing the material more difficult. So I'm going to end it there. Salt state batteries, a holy grail, but in the meantime, EVs are not going to get any cheaper probably until five to 10 years from now, it seems like at this point. Plug-in hybrids are kind of the stopgap right now, in my opinion. Even though gas prices are high, you can do most of your driving on electric range, and then when you go out of town, that's when you can use gasoline and stop anywhere you need to and fill up in five minutes. Charging infrastructure and just overall power grid needs to be completely different here in the United States to feed this EV rev revolution. But yes, we also need the batteries to be way better than they are right now. And it's going to take some time. It's going to take billions of dollars from these companies. And it's going to take a lot of patience on our end. I'm going to end there. Did you guys enjoy today's video? Subscribe for more industry news like this. And a thanks, special thanks to my members who help me and support my family while I make cool videos to talk about batteries and vehicles and stuff like that. Catch you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. And peace out.